When we are using language, we want to make sure that we are using language in the most effective way that we possibly can. And there's a lot of different elements to language effectiveness. The first of these elements is using language appropriately. And we've talked about this a little bit in the past before, but we have to make sure that the language is appropriate to ourselves, that it's appropriate to our audience, that it's appropriate to the context that we are speaking in, and that it's appropriate to the topic that we're talking about. So first, we want to make sure that you are using language that is appropriate to yourself, that you would use in a regular setting, or that you would use in maybe a more formal setting, right? We don't want you to get completely lost in the speech making process. The whole point of public speaking is so that your voice is heard. So you want to make sure that you're using language that is your voice, that's appropriate to you. And if you don't use million dollar words on an everyday basis, you don't have to use a ton of million dollar words in your speech, right? Use language that you know how to use. It'll also help you feel more comfortable when you're giving a speech. You also want to make sure that you're using language that's appropriate to your audience. So you want to make sure that your audience is going to understand the message that you are sending to them. So if they are not going to understand some of the jargon that comes along with your speech's topic, you want to make sure that you either define that jargon for them or use other language to make sure that they're going to understand. You also want to make sure that your language is appropriate to the context that you are speaking in. This is the occasion that you're at, this can be the time of day, the mood of the audience. There's lots of different things that make up the context. So you want to make sure that your language is appropriate for whatever context you are in. And finally, you want to make sure that your language is appropriate to the topic that you're talking about. So you want to make sure that you are using the language that people who are in that area who are experts in that area might use, but also balancing that with the audience appropriateness, right? Um, so just make sure that your language is appropriate to your specific topic, as well as being appropriate to the context, audience, and to yourself. You also want to use vivid language. Remember that speaking can be beautiful right? And it should be beautiful because that way it's more memorable for our audiences. And so we want to use vivid language to help our listeners create strong, distinct, clear images of what it is that we are talking about in our speeches. And we can do this through a number of different poetic elements, imagery, concreteness, simile, metaphor, rhythm, parallelism, repetition, alliteration, assonance, right? There's lots of different poetic elements that we can use in our oral language that can help our audience to remember our speech better. For example, if we use imagery, right? We're using language to represent things, to represent objects, actions, ideas, and we are using the audience's five senses, right? Their sight, their smell, their touch, hearing, those sorts of things. We're using their senses to create this mental picture for our audience, to create this image so that they are living in the world of our speech. And we're using the most concrete language that we can when we are creating these images, right, that when we are using this language to ensure that our audience is understanding what we're talking about, right? Rather than saying entertainment, for example, we say uh, Moana, right? Because Moana is much more concrete. It's a, the specific Disney movie, right? It's a form of entertainment because it's a movie, but it's super concrete. So our audience can't help but understand what we're talking about. We can also use things like similes and metaphors to compare things or to make sure that our audience understands what something is or what something is not, right? For example, if I'm giving a speech about the flu patch, I might say that it is like a band-aid, right? That's a simile to help my audience understand what I'm talking about and to kind of create this image in their heads of what this flu patch looks like. We can also use rhythm in our speech to keep our audience moving along with us and use parallelism, right, to um, 
present our ideas in a parallel fashion, right? So for example, the phrase, give me liberty or give me death. That's an example of parallelism, right? Because it's give me or give me. But, and it wouldn't have been nearly as powerful if they'd said, give me liberty or I'd rather die, right? So using these sort of poetic elements like parallelism and repetition, um, alliteration, having words that start with the same letter, um, using all of this sort of poetic, these poetic elements can help your audience to stay more engaged, right? Martin Luther King Jr. used repetition a lot in his most famous speech, I Have a Dream. He repeated the phrase, I have a dream, multiple times, and that's what stuck in people's minds. And actually, fun fact, that part of his speech was completely impromptu. He didn't really have a plan when he got up there. He was making his notes at the very last minute, and he was just kind of winging it for a lot of that speech. Um, but at any rate, he was a very talented speaker, right? He had lots of practice in public speaking, and he had lots of practice using vivid language like this. So when you're writing your speech, you have to keep these sorts of things in mind because the more that you practice using this vivid language in your speeches, the more naturally it will come and the more engaged your audience will be with your speech.